Welcome to Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. 22, the Garlic Press Restaurant. Great eating. That's what that is. Guess what? What? I've got it. I don't want to hear this. I have it. I don't want it. Your maiden voyage. Uh Uh-uh. On WGN. You wouldn't do this to me because we're friends and you count on me for your livelihood, you see. Because I could shoot you right now. It's because we're buddies. I don't think so. John, what did you want, son? That's exactly what I wanted. I want to hear that tape. See? Oh, no, See? you don't. The f- John, John, John would you like to hear it, John? John, I you don't listen. Want to hear Let it. me explain this, this to you. This will excite my whole day. Let me explain this to you. When I first came to WGN, my first day in the air was April 1st of 1974. See? April Fool's Day of 1974. And I had never been in a radio station like this, had never walked into a radio station like this in my life. I had spent 18 years being a rocky, roly disc jockey at little, tiny, grungy, dimly lit, (laughs) funky radio stations. Had done this for over 18 years. Where you cut your teeth. And several other things. Be that as it may, I walked into GN, and first of all, always before in them little markets, you do all your own work. You run all your own controls. You don't have a Leon sitting here to play the records, nor do you have Kenny to uh, run the controls, nor Mickey to produce the show, nor Lachman to read the news. Uh, What you have is yourself. And which is fine, because you don't... And I walked in here, and I looked at this massive room that we broadcast from, and it really is a big room. This is a barn. And uh, and looked at Leon, which would scare you right away. That hasn't changed, but I was scared to death. I was terrified. Well, your fans will be pleased to see what kind of progress you've made. I'm over still these many scared years. Scared to death. We, we've got to hear. It. John, the uh, the tape is a little old and crinkly. It has not been hermetically sealed all these many years. But then and, again, uh, so am I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the uh, the technical staff tells me they're having just a little bit of trouble Good. getting it. You got it now? No, not no. yet. They're having a little trouble getting it together, but they have it in their little hands. And I'm telling you, you never met a more dedicated bunch than this bunch. They really want to get this on the air. So Did John, you say we'll wait, no matter how long it takes, we'll wait. John, we, I uh, figure within the next few minutes we ought to have it. I can I'm waiting to hear it. Okay. Don't I get a vote here? No. <laughs> this is my show, you know. I don't. That's, uh, this is embarrassing. It Why? was your show. Maybe after the tape, it won't be. Thanks a lot, John. I needed that. Have you ever had... You've been in radio how long? Um, about 15, 16 years, something like that. Have you ever heard tapes from your very, very first oh, broadcast? Every night I go home and I play them, and I say, and they still let me do this. I can't believe it. It is so embarrassing. It yes, really it is. It is. It is uniquely, crushingly embarrassing. I can't imagine how somebody like Carson allows those, you know, when he does the best of, those old, old tapes. Of course, he had reached a level of professionalism and that they weren't embarrassing, I guess. But it just, I cringe. I have friends that I grew up with in the business down in Florida, and every now and then... They will mail me uh, an old tape just to kind of turn the knife. And who I who just, should I write to? Never mind that. I ain't going to tell you. Dorothy, how are you? Yes, how are you, Mr. Collins? Who? Bob. Oh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm right. fine. I thought yes. you were talking to my daddy for a minute. I... Uh, no, you know, I told the, uh, your producer, I remember your first day. I don't remember the whole day, but t- maybe it was two days later. I don't remember any of it. You don't, but, no, I remember, oh, you were very quiet. I was scared to death. And, um... Uh, someone called you, I think it was that day, but like I said, maybe it was two days later, and said to you that, uh, you reminded them of, um, Billy Berg. <laughs> and, re- really? That's true. That must have been Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Wally who? Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> and, uh, the woman, yeah, she even said, I bet you look alike. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Dorothy, they just walked in with the tape. We're uh, oh, we're threading but it up I right now. I just want to say this, Bob. Uh? I hate to think of all the big oranges I'm going to drink on Fridays on my patio listening to you from 2 to 6. Well, I appreciate it, Dorothy. Thank you, dear. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. It's 26 minutes after 2 o'clock. When you get the hearts to... And those round worms rolling away. Hurry, Vey. It's 27 minutes after 2 o'clock, 75 degrees. I have a rather exciting announcement. What's that? Just like the big budget shows... I have a distinctive original first for the Robert Ellis and Lovable Collins show, 2 to 6, Monday through Friday on WGN Radio. Well, tell us. We have now, actually we don't have them at hand, but they will be here, we have been promised, a week from today, next Monday. We have the distinctive original Bob Collins Big Orange designer (laughs) t-shirt 
with a status symbol skunk where the pocket would be were uh, an expensive enough shirt to have a pocket. Oh, you mean where the little alligators yeah, and the foxes yeah, and all those yeah. things? Well, are? instead of that, uh, you know, they put that on the pocket. These shirts aren't quite that expensive, but if indeed the shirt had a pocket, uh, that's where the dead skunk is. The status symbol skunk is there where the pocket should be, and of course there is a blatant commercial message across the belly of the shirt, but we have the Bob well, That's Collins, where there's the most uh, room. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Little uh, bam right there, huh? Well, <clears throat> where are you going to be tomorrow at this time, Jim? <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you remember the very first words you uttered into a hot microphone here at the uh, radio place? When I first started here? Yeah. No, but I do remember Kenton Morris was producing. Kenton is now management, so he doesn't deal with uh, trash like the disc jockeys. But I remember Kenton was producing the show, and I remember the first commercial I ever did on WG, and it was for Staley Syrup, and I called it Stanley Syrup throughout the commercial. And I think I almost didn't make it through the commercial because I had such mic fright. But no, I don't recall at all the very first thing. We take you now. Oh, no. Through the magic uh -uh. of tape recording. I don't want to do this. To April the Wunst. I don't want to do this. 1974. Friends, welcome. We'd like you to meet Bob Collins. I do have one question before we start. Where's the coffee? I can't find any coffee. Well, that, that sounds like me. Well, let's, let's uh, listen some more. Oh. Played good music. Well, I tried my best. He was a famous jobber man from out Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was a top man at his pride. He's the boogie style that no one else could play. Oh, yes. That's Bette Midler in the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy of Company B. It's very, very appropriate that I start my career in Chicago on April Fool's Day. I don't, uh... Hi, I'm Bob Collins. I'm delighted to be here. And Jerry Talbert's in the telephone. Where the heck are you, Jerry? I'm in Barnwell, South Carolina, Bob. You're in Barnwell, South Carolina? Yeah, and this is no April Fool's joke. I thought it was when they told me that they had finally found uh, a personality for the afternoon two to four slot. So I took them at their word, even though I did think it was April Fool's joke. <laughs> And I got out of town. Well, it serves your right being in Barnwell, South. What the heck are you doing there? Well, I'm looking at horses, and I'm uh, enjoying some 90-degree sunshine. Boy, is it great that. Well, I just I wanted everybody to know that I did not uh, come in here and kick you out or anything like that, because you've been bugging us for a day off for how long now? <laughs> well, it hasn't been that bad, but it has been about six have months, we, uh, to be honest. Have we heard enough of this yeah. trash? Uh, well, I suppose. I mean, April. I was going to... Hoping you'd read a commercial. First of uh, no, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't bad. It's a long time ago. You didn't sound frightened. I was scared to death. Sounded good. Nothing has changed. It's WGN Radio Chicago, 2.32 in the afternoon. We must hurry because our vice president in charge of farm stuff is here. <sighs> and you know, if we don't get him on time, <laughs> how tense he gets and how upset. So we'll hurry along here. <laughs> the HFC office nearest you and put their experience to work. April 1st of 1974, I had no idea who Orion Samuelson was or what he did or why. And since, Feeling was mutual. Since that time, Orion Samuelson, who is indeed the, the farm broadcaster in the United States of America, which presumably means in the world, has become one of my closest friends in the world. That's one of the best things that's happened to me at GM. Feeling is mutual. How are you, sir? Just fine, thank you. Good. It's the big hand is on the 7, so that means it's time for the 2.30 <laughs> WGN Business Report. Here's Big O. Thank you. Welcome to your new show. Thank you. Stocks were higher in active trading today, although the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up as much as 11 points. At one time today, we find that we're now below the 1,000 level again. Iowa beef processors climbed six and three quarters to 65 and a quarter today.